right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the SJP Files. I am your host, SJP, and this is episode 10 of the SJP Files on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. Now, 2020 sucked incomparably. Tomorrow is Inauguration Day, and 2021 has sucked so profoundly. Now we're just hoping that, I'm really hoping that tomorrow goes off without a hitch and transfer of power is clean and without incident, but this is Trump we're talking about, so I highly doubt that's going to happen, but I digress to hell with politics. That's not what you're here for. You're here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to talk sports. You're here to listen to, to my worldview on the sports landscapes. Now, this sun, Saturday and Sunday, the weekend, was the divisional playoffs in the NFL, and we also had some happenings on in the NBA. So this is a quick little weekend observation for the NFL this year, for the NFL last weekend. Uh, the Green Bay Packers beat the LA Rams 32-18. to The Buffalo Bills beat the Baltimore Ravens 17 to 3. The Kansas City Chiefs held on to beat the Cleveland Browns 22 17. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the New Orleans Saints 30 to 20. Now, of these games, there was only really two games I was honestly interested in, and that was the Chiefs and the Browns and the Saints and the Bucks. The Bucks mainly because of Tom Brady and the Browns KC game. I mean, you're looking, you got two of the best young quarterbacks in the league. Patrick Mahomes, who's arguably the best quarterback in the league. Not even really arguably. It's pretty much between him and Aaron Rodgers. And then that's it. Um, the Browns, Browns and the Chiefs, this game was, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Um, this game was pretty much all... Kansas City from pretty much jump. I mean, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, Kansas City pretty much held, went wire to wire on this game. I mean, touchdown. They had two touchdowns in the first quarter, two field goals in the second quarter. By the end, of, by halftime, the score was 19 to 3. It was pretty clear that the Chiefs. We're going to win this game. But after uh, Patrick Mahomes went down in the, I believe it was the third quarter, Patrick Mahomes pretty much went down in the third quarter. And then the Cleveland Browns started to basically just storm back. They scored two touchdowns in the third quarter, had an interception in the fourth quarter, but it just was a little too little too late, and they just couldn't get it done. And the Kansas City Chiefs defense played incredibly well. The Browns' Baker Mayfield played well, 23 for 37, 204, one touchdown, one interception. You know, the Browns' running game wasn't as great as you wanted it to be, probably because they fell down so big early on in this game. Well, I wouldn't say big, but they did fall down, you know, big into the first half. So at the end of the first half, they were down by, what, 17 points? Not 17. Was it 17? No, it was 16 points. They were basically down by 16 points by the end of the first half. So there really wasn't any room for running. And then after that, it was – after that, you know, Patrick Mahomes – 21 for 30, 255, a touchdown, no picks. But he went down with a concussion in this game in the second half, which is really what allowed Cleveland to, to make this a close game. But uh, you've got a Cleveland, a Cleveland Browns team that is incredibly, incredibly well set up to be a, a good team in the future. I mean, They've got everything they kind of need. They've got a great running game. You've got a talented quarterback. Uh, I mean, you've got very good wide receivers in 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 um in you got Rashad Heaven, Rashad Higgins, 
you know, David Njoku, Jarvis Landry. And in the backfield, you got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hutt, depending on if Kareem resigns this season. But overall, this was kind of – this wasn't the game I expected. I didn't ex- really expect this game to be close. I expected this game to kind of be a blowout because I expected the Chiefs to really assert their dominance. I know they haven't really been blowing teams out this year like they were doing last year and the year before. They've been kind of just cruising along. And this game would have ended to me in a blowout if not for the injury to Patrick Mahomes. So, well, the Chiefs heading to the AFC Championship game. And in the, a- and in the NFC, the Bucks and the Saints, the Bucks outclassed. The Saints, pretty much most of this game, as far as I'm concerned. I know the at the end of the first quarter, it was 6-3, to three, Saints up. And then in the second quarter, the, you know, the, the Bucks went up 10-6. to six, And then Saints score a touchdown. This was a pretty back-close, back-and-forth game, but I expected the Bucks to win even though it was kind of in question there for a little bit, you know, after the second half in the second half, it looks like it looked like at the beginning of the third quarter that the saints might start to pull away, but the bucks came back, scored a touchdown, scored a field goal, and then scored another touchdown in the fourth quarter. And the, and the saints kind of just couldn't keep up. They just got outplayed in the, in the back half of the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. And the Bucks just took this one. Tom Brady in like his like 80th conference championship game. If Tom Brady wins, if Tom Brady wins the NFC, he, I think he'll be the one of the very few quarterbacks to win both an AFC and NFC championship game. I also believe if he could win a Super Bowl, this will be his seventh and will probably make him, to be honest, unquestionably the greatest football player ever, maybe. But that's that's just, you know, Tom Terrific doing it again, putting the entire NF, putting his team on, this team of young kids on his back and, and showing them how to win. As for Drew Brees, 19 for 34, 134 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. The Buccaneers defense really made Drew's life hell in this game. Picked, picked it, like I said, picked him off three on three separate occasions. Picked him off in the second quarter. They picked him off twice in the fourth quarter to seal this game. And there we go, baby. That's all that really matters. Now to the NBA. And this is really the the thing I love to talk about. It's what I spend most of my time talking about. Uh, I believe the oh the week five power rankings are out for the NBA. I believe last week we did week four, but uh, this is the week five power rankings. Uh, before we get to that, we had a couple things. You know, Kyrie Irving missed the seventh straight game. Uh, I believe he's. People are, you know, trying to see if he, they can get him to play tomorrow night on Wednesday, you know, the twentieth inauguration day. Oh, good God! But uh, he had a couple games postponed last night. Uh, no, uh, C.J. McCollum, who's been having a phenomenal year this year, he's going to be out for four weeks with a fractured foot. He's going to miss about twenty games, give or take. Uh, the Cavs are looking to trade Kevin Porter Jr. Uh, Damian Lillard and Kevin Durant are named NBA Players of the Week. Kevin Durant has, without question, slid himself into the MVP conversation, you know, a year after rupturing his Achilles. Uh, Miles Turner, he's got, he's day-to-day with a fracture in his right hand. And uh, that's that's pretty much, also, John ja Morant, John ja Morant uh, made it back from his injury, from his ankle injury, a little earlier than I expected him back, uh, played, what was it, two days ago? I forgot who he played against, honestly, but I know he's back, and I know last night they played against, I believe it was the Suns. So, uh, yeah, it was the Suns. I don't think he made, I don't think that was his comeback game against the Suns, but he did make it back, and I believe they did win. Yep, and they won 108-104. to 
that's the first game I'm going to talk about. The Phoenix Suns and the Memphis Grizzlies. The Suns are 7-5 and five and the Memphis Grizzlies are 7-6 and six, uh, early in the season, but both have kind of but you could see both teams and the and the Memphis Grizzlies played very well while um, Ja was on the shelf momentarily. It was very surprising. I thought they were going to go on a big losing streak, but they didn't. They played uh, a, a lot of tough games against a lot of tough teams. You know, played the Lakers great a couple times in that in that stretch. I mean, they were they're six and four in their last ten games. They're on a five-game win streak. I mean, they played the Lakers very well in the two meetings they had last week. Not last week or the week before, I believe it was. But uh, Kyle Anderson, 10 points. Uh, Brandon Clark, 17 points. Xavier Tillian, Dylan Brooks, John Morant had 17 points, 10 assists. Grayson Allen had 16 points off the bench. So did Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain has been really establishing himself in this like rookie class, he's without question one of he's like one of the steals of this draft. They found him at the 30th pick. I mean, attended TCU. He's a his numbers don't look impressive, but if you were watching his games, especially against the Lakers, he was putting up numbers and he's a great addition to this team. Uh he might not be their second scorer, but he's an absolutely great addition to them. He's gonna He's what six, six five. I mean two fifteen. He looks. He's big. He's strong. He's got a stroke. I mean, he just looks great. Uh, last five games haven't been impressive stats. You know, ten points, nine points, three points, ten points, ten points. But his plus minuses are always great on the court. Sixteen plus minus of sixteen plus minus of eighteen plus minus of thirteen steals assists he's not a great rebounder but rebounds well enough and he's a good three-point shooter he's a good three-point shooter which is what every team could possibly use and on the phoenix side uh phoenix is i say seven and five phoenix is seven and five uh yeah mikhail bridges 17 points, eight rebounds. Yeah, Cameron Johnson, 10 points, four rebounds. DeAndre Ayton, 18 points, 16 rebounds. Devin Booker had only 12 points, and Chris Paul has 16 points. Now, DeAndre Ayton isn't where I thought he would be. I thought he was going to be a guy who's going to average like, you know, 24 and 12 this year. He's got the 12 rebounds, but he's only averaging 13 points, which I am very kind of disappointed. And I thought he was going to take a bigger leap this year kind of really step into the guys kind of step to the guys who were in his draft class guys like trey young and luka Doncic. but this year he's kind of taken a step back offensively i don't know if that's because of chris paul's addition to the team or if it's because he might have just regressed or he's just having a slow start to the year but he needs to get his game up because if he if this team really wants to contend, then they're gonna need him to 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 really expand his game. You can't be just having him like this game was good for him. Six, 18 points, 16 rebounds, you know, four offensive rebounds. He had, you know, no steals, one block. But he needs to be either a bigger force defensively or he needs to really get better offensively. And Devin Booker himself isn't having the greatest year. Honestly, he looks a little, he looks like he's having a little, you know, little issues this year. He has an average, he's only averaging 22 points so far. He hasn't averaged 22 points since his sophomore year. Last year, he averaged 26, well, 27 the year before that, 27 the year before that, 25, and then 22. So his numbers are down this year. His field goal percentage is a little down but he's still shooting 46%. His three-point percentage is down. I'd want that a little higher than 34%, but he's only taking six a game, so that's good for him. Uh, I expected with Chris Paul on the team, I expected his assists to go down because Chris is going to be the primary ball handler on this team. But overall, his numbers seem to have gone a little down kind of across the board, and that's not what I was expecting from him. I was expecting a little more, you know, 
a little more more play from him. But uh, John Moran coming back has definitely energized the Memphis Grizzlies. And I, I could see them kind of going in on a little run here and stacking up some wins behind uh, behind Ja and with CJ McCollum losing losing CJ McCollum for like the next four weeks. You know, the Portland Trailblazers, I could see them definitely sliding back, even if they've got Damian Lillard. This is the Western Conference, still the deepest conference, and you still got a couple of really good teams who kind of aren't really playing well yet. You got the Denver Nuggets, who have who are only at like five, who are six and seven, and the Dallas Mavericks, who are six and seven. Dallas just got Kristaps Porzingis back, but uh, they're neither of these teams have are kind of playing up to their potential. Even though Nikola Jokic is averaging a triple double out here in Denver, but they're these two teams. You got the New Orleans Pelicans, who also aren't playing well. I mean, these three teams, I very much expect to kind of you know, put some uh, put some work back in. I expect both of them to kind of get better. The New Orleans Pelicans are kind of, or someone looking for, they're not where I expected them to be. I expect them to be a lot better this year, uh, especially they're older and they've played well. I mean, they lost to Charlotte and they had their game postponed against Dallas and then they lost to the Clippers, and then they lost to the Lakers. They beat the Kings. So now tonight they play the Jazz, and the Jazz look great. They're 9-4. and four. I know a lot of team, not a lot of people are talking about them, but the Utah Jazz are 9-4. and four. They're third in the Western Conference behind the Clippers and the Lakers. Clippers are 10-4, and four, and the Lakers, Clippers are 10-4. and four. The Lakers are 11-4. and four. Clippers fresh off. I believe it was a fresh off a win against the Indiana Pacers and the Lakers fresh off a loss against the Golden State Warriors. Now they're going to be playing the Milwaukee Bucks on Thursday on TNT, which is a game I can't wait to watch. Unfortunately, I'll be at work, so that's not going to happen. God, I hate my schedule sometimes. Night shift, man. It's, it's the night shift. But that's pretty much that for that game. Uh, next, we have the debut of James Harden in Brooklyn against the Orlando Magic. James Harden came in, drops a triple-double. This dude drops a triple-double in his debut with the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets win 122-115. to 115. Not a lot of defense in this game. Tremendous amounts of offense. Kevin Durant had 42 points. James Haddon had 32 points. You know, uh, Joe Harris getting some open shots with the gravity of those two guys. He's going to get a lot of open shots. He has 17 points. Jeff Green moving into the starting lineup. He had 10 points, four rebounds. DeAndre Jordan, what more is there to say? Just DeAndre Jordan. Um, James Harden, 32 points. 12 rebounds, 14 assists. Kevin Durant, 42 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. This is pretty much how this is going to go. They look great together. They It feels like they kind of just slipped back into their OKC kind of ways. James is a much better scorer now than he was then. And Durant's a lot more confident now than he was then also. Their games have matured so much, but it still feels like these two guys really know how to play with each other. The question is, the real question is, how are they going to play with Kyrie Irving? Because their defense is terrible. And you saw that in the last few minutes of the Bucks nets game where the Bucks really didn't have a lot of difficult shots, really didn't have to make a lot of difficult shots in the, in like the – bottom half of the fourth quarter i mean the last four minutes of the fourth quarter the bucks were kind of getting open shots and open layups and open jump shots and open dunks so i was not i knew the defense wasn't going to be great but they need to add some guys in the buyout market they need first of all they need a rim protector 
although DeAndre Jordan had 12 points and 12 rebounds, a nice double double for him, he is not he is not what he once was. I don't know how many games you're gonna get from DeAndre Jordan to give you 12 and 12, but Kevin Durant had 30 in this game. You know, Jeff Green had 14, Joe Harris had 20, uh, James Harden had 34 and 12. He's averaging pretty much like 33 points in his two Brooklyn games. Uh, they're looking at Kyrie to come back on Wednesday. The real question is, can they play real defense when it matters? Because as far as I know, no team – actually, there's one exception because I heard this this morning while I was watching, um, while I was watching uh, Sports Talk. Uh, as far as I know, there's only one team to win a championship in like the last 40 years and not be a top 15 defense, and that's the Los Angeles Lakers, the 01 LA Lakers, when Shaq in his prime and you had a young Kobe. And this was a point where Shaq could give you like 35 and 20 pretty much any time he wanted. He was completely unstoppable from about 2000, 2003, the most dominant player the NBA has ever seen without Keishan without question, even more dominant than Jordan was at, at his peak. I don't think anyone's had a higher peak than Shaq had in those three years, in that three-year span. But uh, this team is not going to have a top 15 defense. Uh, James Harden is good in the post. He's a good post defender. From what I hear, I've really seen it. Not a lot of guards post up anyway. So and Kevin Durant's a good defender. Jeff Green's an okay defender. DeAndre Jordan, like I said, is not what he used to be. Joe Harris isn't a good defender. James Harden is not a good perimeter defender. Kyrie's not a good perimeter defender. So the question is, how are you going to win a championship when you can't play defense? Because the NBA has not changed enough to where you can win a championship and not play defense. That that can't happen. That won't happen. The LA Lakers won their championship last year, last season, not not with just the 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 prolific, you know, games of both Anthony Davis and LeBron James, but they were the best defensive team in the playoffs last year. I mean, they made guys like Damian Lillard and James Harden and and Nicole and Nikola Jokic. And they made their lives incredibly difficult on the defensive end. And this year, the Lakers may not be as athletic as they were last year, but the schemes they're running, they're still a solid defensive team. They're still going to be in the top five, the top ten in defense this year. So for them, it's a real question of can the Brooklyn Nets, you know, get their defense together? Because if they can't, they're not going to win. If they can't, they are not going to win. And it sucks. And it's horrendous. And I wish better for them. But if they're not a good defensive team, this is not going to go well for them. It's just not. I mean, I think the Lakers, I'm trying to figure out what the Lakers are. They say, I believe the Lakers are, they average, see, the Lakers average 115 points a game. I mean, they're 10, they win games by like 10 points. They're kind of the best. Yeah, they're fifth in offense. They're fifth in points per game, third in rebounds, 10th in assists, and third in opponents points per game. Those are the Lakers. And if they're most likely the team, the Nets are gonna meet the next the Nets now nine and six. They've just they've won their last four games. I really wasn't worried, but before I am a little worried now. Because the Nets have the third best offense scoring offense and the twenty third ranked scoring defense. My God. The third 
the 23rd ranked scoring divas. Now, they, if they can get that into the top 15, I definitely will be a hell of a lot more comfortable with picking them to win the championship this year. But until that happens, I am not. Oh, excuse me. I'm not going to like toss my, you know, cap into the ring and say, hey, we're going to demolish the entire league. Because in the regular season, the Bucks have shown this. In the regular season, with just raw talent, you can raw talent, raw offensive ability. These guys, they're gonna blow, they're gonna blow some teams out. They're gonna win a lot of high scoring games like they've won their last two games. But you still gotta be able to stop people in the playoffs and not just you're gonna have to stop guys for whole stretches. Now, with an offense this potent, you're gonna probably gonna fly through the first round. But when you get into the second round in the conference finals, if you get into the second round in the conference finals, especially the conference finals, you're going to have to stop people or at least slow people down for stretches of time and allow your offense to put some distance between you guys. You still got to be able to play defense to win a championship. And I don't know if the Bucks, I don't know if the Nets can do that. I hope they get it together, but I don't, I'm not overly optimistic. Now we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the Warriors and the Lakers, the Houston Rockets and Chicago, the Detroit Pistons and the Miami Heat uh, with Victor Oladipo making his Rockets debut. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to start a podcast. It's free. There's a There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, all right, all right. We just pay some bills, but we are back now. Now, as we left off, I told you guys we're going to talk about the Golden State Warriors and the L.A. Lakers game. Now, the Lakers led this game pretty much all the way through until roughly about the fourth quarter when they kind of just blew of a a double-digit lead to the Golden State Warriors. And it happens sometimes. Uh, Steph Curry did not have a great shooting game. 8 for 22, 3 for 12 from three-point land. But uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. stepped up in a big way. It looks like his shot's starting to fall. Andrew Wiggins game gave you some points, gave you some buckets. Uh, Damon Lee, off, I know Damon Lee's their guy off the bench, didn't have a great game. But uh, LeBron didn't exactly have a great offensive game himself. He was 6 for 16, 2 for 7 from 3. Anthony Davis was 6 for 16, 0 for 1 from 3. He had 17 points and 17 rebounds. Dennis Schroeder had 25 points. He had a good game. Bad game from 3, though. Kyle Kuzma gave you 17, gave you 15 off the bench, and Montrose Hill gave you 17 off the bench. Now, nah, that's what's great for the Lakers, but this is one of those games that I wouldn't say does is not indicative of where both of these teams are. The Warriors are seventh in the Western Conference with at a seven and six record, and the Lakers are eleven and four. Like I said, this game is not really indicative. This is one of those games that happens in the middle of the year where a really good team loses to a team they shouldn't lose to. And this is, you know, Steph's kind of been you know, trying to find his range. He's finding it a lot harder to get open shots without Klay Thompson on the court. Kelly Oubre is not that guy. Even though he shot 50% from the field, he only shot 25% from three. And Andrew Wiggins shot 60% from the field and 60% from three. He still only had 18 points, three rebounds, one assist. So he kind of did everything but I mean, he kind of did everything, but uh, he did. He scored, which is pretty much all Andrew Wiggins does, which is the reason that irritates me so much about him because he didn't do the little things. 
Now, Kelly Oubre had 23 points. He had four rebounds, two of which were offensive rebounds. He's not a great passer, so no assists, but he had two steals and two blocks. He does the little things that you like to see in a player, and I do really like Kelly Oubre Jr. I, he's still – he's streaky. He's a streaky player, but – he does the little th- when his shot's not falling and when his shot is falling, he does the little things that help you win. And that's what he did last night. James Wiseman putting in work as usual. Uh, James Wiseman did not have a great game. He had yeah, four points, three rebounds. He only played 12 minutes. He started, but he only played 12 minutes. I think he got hurt in this game. I didn't really watch the game. I saw some of the highlights. But I think he got hurt, which is one of the reasons he only played 12 minutes. Uh, Marcus Hall, the Lakers themselves, they just had a bad shooting night. This is not a game that is going to make me, you know, take a step back like some people I know. Like I was watching uh, Undisputed a little bit this morning and uh, Skip Bayless, you know, talking about the Lakers once again. I didn't really watch the whole thing because I already know what Skip's going to say. Oh, how can you be the greatest player alive? How can you be the greatest player of all time if, you, if you're if you losing to the Warriors in January? It's January. We are five weeks into the season. They lost to the Warriors. Woohoo. Whatever. Doesn't matter. We still got 60-plus games to play, and the Lakers are going to be the top seed in the Western Conference most likely or one of the top two seeds in the Western Conference, depending on whatever the hell the Clippers uh, uh, managed to get. I know the Clippers have played very well in their last 10 games, but they still don't worry me whatsoever. If the only team that really worries me in the NBA, if I'm a Lakers fan, it's if the Brooklyn Nets get a defense. That's the only thing that worries me. I still think the Boston Celtics are too young. The Philadelphia 76ers, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid cannot win a championship together. They can't. Their their game, their their games do not work in a playoff setting together. They don't. Giannis Antetokounmpo's offensive game has not evolved to the point where it worries me in the NBA Finals. Uh, that's pretty much it in the Eastern Conference. And as for the Western Conference, when playoff P begins to show up when playoff p exists then i won't then i might you know when he actually exists when he manifests himself into into the playoffs i will believe the clippers have a chance to beat the lakers but until it's but until i am proven otherwise paul george is going to fall apart in the playoffs like he does every year he's going to have one or two games of playoff series where he just completely just doesn't show up the utah jazz don't have enough offense The Phoenix Suns don't have enough experience. The San Antonio Spurs, incredibly well coached, don't have the talent necessary. Same thing with the Portland Trailblazers. The Golden State Warriors, I don't think, are healthy enough. And the Memphis Grizzlies are way too young. Now, the Dallas Mavericks, if they can, Dallas Mavericks and the Denver Nuggets, if they can get their offenses going, maybe. And if Chris House Porzingis can stay healthy and Nicole Jokic can figure out a way to play some defense on Anthony Davis, then maybe. But until then, I'm not worried. Now, the Houston Rockets played the Chicago Bulls. Houston won one. Uh, Houston lost. Sorry, one twenty-five to one twenty. But that's not what really this game was about. This game was about the day the Rockets debut of Victor Oladipo, who came in. Dropped 32 points, five rebounds, nine assists, along with Christian Wood, 30 points, nine rebounds. Victor, you had Eric Gordon, who had 21 points, four rebounds. I mean, this team, from what I saw, Victor Oladipo and Christian Wood could be a deadly conversation. You know, Vic is averaging 21 points, five rebounds, four assists. Right now, uh, he hadn't played since uh since the trade uh, before the trade but you know a great first game he looked good he's not as explosive as he was before the leg injury but he's better i think he's better offensively he's 
it looks like he's definitely worked on his offensive game since his injury. I hadn't had a chance to really watch him play this year. This is one of the first games I did get a chance to watch him play. And it very much looks like he's he's not back to what he once was because I don't think he'll ever be that ever again. But he's not he's never going to be that athletic again, that explosive, but he's still a good shooter. He still get hot. He's great in the mid-range. He knows how to attack and finish at the rim. So if everyone on this team could actually stay healthy, and that's the problem with this team. You've got three, you're basically three of your four best players have a few injury concerns. You know, John Wall didn't play in this game. DeMarcus Cousins only played 15 minutes. He played 16 minutes, 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 5 from 3. He did have six rebounds and four assists, which is good. But uh, this team, they they just they just need to stay healthy. And Christian Wood, once again, just just showing the entire NBA that him being undrafted is kind of criminal. Him him Christian Wood being undrafted is very much a criminal act. It's 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 kind of criminal. I mean, he's this is his what fourth year in the NBA. Uh, he's, I'm trying to, he was born in 90, 25 years old. This year, he's averaging 23 points. Last year, he averaged 13 points. The year before that, he averaged 17 with New Orleans and then eight with, who did I look at? I think that's Toronto. And then in, yeah, he averaged 17 with New Orleans and then he averaged like eight with Toronto. He got traded. I think, yo, man, got traded like three times in one year. How the hell does that happen? He played 15. He got drafted. Looks like he got picked up by the Philadelphia 76ers. Then he went to Charlotte. Then he was in Milwaukee and then got traded. And it looks like he got traded to New Orleans and then traded again. I think I think that's his G League team. I think he went down to the G League for a little bit and then got picked up by Detroit, played 62 games last year, and now he's in Houston putting up serious numbers. 24 points, 11 rebounds. This he, this guy could be really, really special. He could be one of those really good me, good big men. He takes about four to five threes a game. He hits about two of them. So he's in that 35%. He averages 50. He's 53% from the field. He gives you almost two blocks a game. He's good. He's definitely matured. He could definitely be an all-star level player in this game today, especially in the Western Conference. I mean, he just got a big contract. So, you know, shout out to Christian Wood. I love his game. I love him as a player. I think he's I think he's great. Next, we're gonna go to the last game of the day that I'm gonna talk about the Detroit Pistons and the Miami Heat. Now, the Pistons are the worst team in the Eastern Conference at 3-10, and and the Miami Heat are 5-7. and seven. The Miami Heat have been hit with a couple injuries. Uh, I, Jimmy Butler still didn't play last night. Uh, Unanis Hadlam didn't play. Tyler Hero didn't play. Well, Unanis Hadlam doesn't really play. But Tyler Hero didn't play. Yeah, Andre Iguodala played. Kendrick Nunn had, gave you some good minutes off the bench, 35 minutes, 18 points. Goran Dragic, 22 points. Duncan Robinson, 18 points. And Bam Adebayo, 28 points, including a, a like game-saving block at the end of the game. You know, as for the Detroit Pistons, Jeremy Grant continues to show that he can put up big numbers on bad teams, big numbers on a bad team. I would not have left Denver but you know he i think he wanted to prove that he could put up big numbers and he's putting up big numbers. Blake Griffin, another terrible game from Blake. Mason Publey, 15 points. Wayne Ellington, 24 points. At Sadiq Bay, you know, didn't really play much. He only played 4 minutes. That's pretty much it for the Detroit Pistons Miami game. Uh the Heat look okay. They're 4 and 6 in their last 10. They've only won one they just before this game they just came off a loss so there's not really much to say about that as for the standings right as of right now as of like five o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday the Boston Celtics are at the top of the Eastern Conference at eight four 
The Milwaukee Bucks are nine and five. The Philadelphia 76ers are nine and five. Indiana Panthers eight and five. Nets seven and six. The Knicks seven and eight. Then you've got the Cavaliers at six and seven. The Atlanta Hawks at six and seven. Then you've got the Orlando Magic at six and eight. Charlotte at six and eight. Uh, Bulls six and eight. You got like a three way tie for nine. And then you've got the Heat, Raptors, Wizards, and Pistons rounding out your Eastern Conference. And the West, you got the Lakers at the top at 11 and 4. Then you've got the Clippers at 10 and 4. And then 9 and 4, Utah Jazz, 7 and 5. Phoenix Suns, 8 and 6. San Antonio Spurs, 8 and 6. Portland Trailblazers, 7 and 6. Golden State Warriors, 7 and 6. Memphis Grizzlies. Then you've got uh, 6 and 6, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Then you've got Dallas, Denver, New Orleans. San Antonio, Sacramento, Houston, and Minnesota. Those That's your standings for the Western Conference. Now, for the power rankings, the Week 5 power rankings, the Lakers, once again, hold court. They're at the top of the West once again. They're 19th in pace, 14th in offensive rating, number one in defensive rating, and number one in net rating. They're clearly the best team in the league. Clearly. They are clearly the best team in the league, and there's not much debate for it. The Milwaukee Bucks are number two. They eighth in pace, first in offensive rating, seventh in defensive rating, second in net rating. The Bucks, once again, another great regular season start for them. They're a great regular season team. The real question is who's going to be there closing the playoffs. And from what it looked like last night, it looks like it's going to be Chris Middleton, and that scares the ever living shit out of me. If I'm a Bucks fan, if Chris Middleton is your guy, you want closing out games, then more power to you, man. Uh, the LA Clippers, ugh. they're ten and four. They're up from number six last week, twenty seventh in pace, second in offensive rating. 20th in defensive rating, and 6th and 3rd in net rating. The 20th in defensive rating scares me. If I'm, They're probably going to get better as the year goes on, but that worries me. The Boston Celtics are at 4. They're 20th in pace, 12th in offensive rating, 14th in defensive rating, and 11th in net rating. Then we got the Suns at 5, the Utah Jazz at 6, the Nets at 7. They're up from 13th place. The Indiana Pacers at eight, they're down. Phoenix, the Philadelphia 76ers at nine, they're down. The Portland Trailblazers at 10. The Dallas Mavericks at 11. The Denver Nuggets at 12. Got a Golden State Warriors at 13. The San Antonio Spurs at 14. The Memphis Grizzlies at 15. The Pelicans at 16. The Raptors at 17. They're four and eight, which is shocking. I did not expect them to kind of just fall off a cliff. They look really bad. They really, they look really bad, and I'm I was not expecting them to have this poor of a start in the year. Uh, the Miami Heat are four and seven. Same thing with the Heat. I also didn't expect them to have this slow a start. The Charlotte Hornets are six and eight. They dropped from fifteen. Uh, I this is kind of what I I expect the Hornets to be kind of. I do expect them. I do want them to make the playoffs. I expect them to make the playoffs or at least be in that bubble tournament, uh, they're going to be hovering around 500 pretty much the whole year. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder at 20. Better, kind of a little better than I expected. The New York Knicks only two games below 500, and we'll see if that lasts. The Atlanta Hawks, I expected them to be better. The Cleveland Cavaliers, I expected them to be worse. The Houston Rockets with the trade of James Harden, and you've got the additions of Victor Oladipo, John Wall hasn't really been healthy yet. John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins are still kind of finding their way. So I expect them to be bad this year, maybe even get a high draft pick. The Orlando Magic started hot, but, man, they got decimated by injuries. Sucks for them. It really does. With the with the loss of Markel Fultz, they've kind of just hit a – they've lost their last five – Games. I think they started the season like six and what six and two, and now they've lost five straight. Now they're six and seven. It it hurts. It really does. Sorry, Magic fans and the Bulls. I expected kind of expected them to suck a little bit more, but it just shows that they're kind of growing up. They're evolving. They're they're kind of just. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think about it. They're 
their games have evolved. Detroit Pistons suck as much as I thought they would. The Washington Wizards are crazy how bad they are right now. The Sacramento Kings, I expected them to be a little bit better. And the Memphis and the Minnesota Timberwolves, I expected them to suck. I expected them to suck because they always suck. And Carlton Lee Towns puts up nothing but empty stats. He puts up great stats, but empty stats. I want to see what he can do on a actual, you know, when someone holds him accountable because I don't think he can be the leader of a team to win a championship. I don't think he can be the best player on a team to win a championship either. He may have that kind of talent, but he does not have that kind of personality. <coughs> And those are your week five power power rankings. Now, I'm going to put up episode 11. is going to go up on Thursday. Yeah, episode 11 is probably going to go up early, early Thursday morning. I wish I could do a little bit later. Actually, I think I can do a little bit later. But uh, episode 11 is probably going to go up around noonish, 1, maybe 2 p.m., on Thursday, on Thursday show, I'm going to talk about what happened uh, tonight and tomorrow night in the NBA. I'm going to preview the TNT games on Thursday. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the conference championship games in in the NFL, the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. Hopefully, Pac- Patrick Mahomes gets cleared after his concussion so that he can play in the AFC Championship game. Because if the Chiefs lose to the Bills because Patrick didn't play, I'm going to be very irritated. The hell with Bills Mafia. I know last week I said I don't really have any animosity towards Bills Mafia, but I got a Bills fan at work and he irritated me. So my hostility towards Bills Mafia is very real. So y'all can go. You all go straight to hell. Every single one of you Bills Mafia motherfuckers can eat my shorts. Shout out to Bart Simpson. Had to take a little water there. But that's it for episode 10 of the SJP Files. You know what it is. You know how I do it. This is another solid episode. We'll get better as time goes on. We'll start you know, playing on segments. I'm probably going to end up doing like a weekend observation segment on the Tuesday episode and then a weekend preview on the Thursday episode. That's kind of where I'm feeling right now. But uh, we'll see you Thursday after the inauguration. Once again, hopefully nothing goes wrong. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon.